RPV TV presents Studio RPV, the Peninsula's local news show with co-hosts Maria Soreo and Liz Brown Swanson. On today's show, we take you to the Palos Verdes Art Center for a brand new exhibit that will inspire your inner artist. And just in time for you to participate in an art contest to celebrate the city of Rancho Palos Verdes' 50th anniversary. And it's Heart Month. Are you eating heart healthy? And it's also Black History Month, and we are going to tell you about the story of an African-American architect that helped design the neighborhood of Seaview. Hello, and thanks for joining us today on Studio RPV. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Happy February. Yes, Liz, there's <laughs> so much going on this month, but we have to start right here with that big game, also known as the Super Bowl. Yes, what a, what an epic game, and I have to say, I, like you and I both, you know, you're a Cowboys fan, I'm the Patriots fan. Well, maybe yeah. not. Are you still a Patriots fan, Liz? <laughs> well, I have to say, we can talk from about Boston. That, that's another show. But, yeah, that's you true. Know, I'm all about celebrating all the teams, but I have to say the Chiefs were tremendous and they it was were. an incredible game. It was great because both teams were really evenly matched, I thought, and you knew it was going to go right down to the wire, which it did. So whether you were a Chiefs fan or an Eagles fan, I think everybody had a great time. It definitely kept you at the edge of the seat, especially when, sure. unfortunately, we saw Patrick Mahomes get injured at first. Yes. We thought, is he really coming back? This is a game changer, but... Uh, yeah, he, red, and red and white one. I think that he would have had to have his leg fall off before he was not coming back on that field. Yes, so, yes. Congrats to the Chiefs. And we were also talking about just the sort of the first things that happened at that Super Bowl. You were mentioning there were two African American quarterbacks. Yes, two brothers that played in a Super Bowl against each other, which was really exciting. So right. that was fun. And the mom had the coolest outfit ever. She had half Chiefs and half Eagles, and I'll have to throw some pictures up there because they were so adorable. She even had the names on the back of her shoes, so right, it was, it was right. so good. And actually, it was Very fun creative. to see when she was sitting um, in the stand, she was with DeMar. That's right. right. Yeah, so he and Roger Goodell. Looking healthy, she of course. She had a good seat. Yes, of best course. seat in the house. But we had a great seat watching from home, right? We d absolutely, yes, absolutely. I met some friends, and we just had a great time, um, yeah, watching the game. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. A lot excellent, of fun. Excellent. All right, Liz, when we come back, we are going to welcome our in-studio guest who's going to tell us all about an art contest that you can participate in. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Monique Sugimoto. And Michelle Fricky. And we are both archivists with the Palos Verdes Library District, and we'd like to welcome everybody to come and watch History on the Hill with us on RPV TV. So we'll see you there. Emergencies and disasters can happen at any time causing an extended utility outage. Incorporate these easy tips to help you and your family deal with major utility outages. Know where utility shutoffs are located and how to use them. You could be on your own for some time. Gather your supplies now. The steps you take today can help ensure the safety of you and your family. Contact us for more emergency preparedness and disaster safety tips. We are back and now joined by Recreation and Park Specialist Karen Oakstad. Karen, thank you so much for being in studio with us today. Thanks for having me tonight. Yeah. You're joining us, of course, to tell us all about what's happening with the city's ongoing art contest to mm -hmm. celebrate 50th anniversary. It's so cool what you're doing. So share yes. how our RPV residents can get involved with the art contest. All right. Well, we are having an art contest um, to commemorate the 50th anniversary. Um, we're basically accepting um, traditional media, it, I mean 2D media, but it can be traditional and digital as well. Um, we're inviting um, RPV residents from the age 18 years and older to participate and um, school children from kindergarten to high school that reside in the peninsula area. Okay. They um, are invited to participate as well. What kind of things are they drawing, painting? What do you, kind of pictures are you seeing? What kind of art? Um, right now, um, we are seeing a lot of lighthouse pictures. We've seen one come in. Um, it was a painting of wayfarers, and they're all amazing, beautiful. Um, this, the, we have a lot of talented people in this city. Yeah, oh they're my gosh, so artwork, many. So, yeah. um, so I encourage you, you know, get out there. Um, we have a lot of trails, parks, um, beautiful landmarks and park sites. Mm -hmm. and. Get out there, paint. Um, if you're more into computers, if you're a Photoshop guru, you can also you can paint um, on your computer as well. Can you just share more about how um, submissions will come to you in the city? Because 
um, they're doing this electronically mm -hmm. and they've yes. used the website which is rpv50.com so yes. talk about that process because people aren't dropping off paintings no. No. to City Hall. No, no. We, we want you to keep your um, your original work so if you are um, taking the traditional route um, with painting or, or pencil drawing or charcoal um, etc you can take a picture of your work or you can scan it in and you can just submit it um, on the city website. Okay, and I know you were mentioning that you've been involved with this contest, uh, creating it and so forth. How did you guys come up with this idea? Um, I don't know, we just thought it was, um, we just want, because of the 50th anniversary is coming up and we're in this beautiful area, mm -hmm. we just thought, you know, what's a better way to express the beauty with traditional artwork and paintings or even digital artwork? There's 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 so many ideas and inspiration out here, so that's true. That's exactly why. And the anniversary is officially September seventh of twenty twenty three, yes. and you've been with the city for fifteen years. Can you share a little bit about what you do for the city as well? Obviously, you're running this contest, but um, you love art. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, I I work in recreation and parks. Um, I've been there since the beginning. I started out as a rec leader one, and then I'm currently a recreation specialist. I assist in the recreation and parks office. Um, anything from administrative duties to I help a lot with graphic the graphic design projects as well, creating wow. flyers. Um, I help with the city newsletter and the seasonal um, recreation insert as well, um, and any sort flyers and stuff. And I also help with the um, special events as well. So. Okay. Well, this special event is really special because it's part of the anniversary, and again, it's the fiftieth. So get out there and just get your inner art on. You know, we want to see beautiful, <laughs> just drawings, paintings of the landscape, whatever you love. Time to paint the town, and I say no paint by numbers. That's no what we used to do. Numbers. Right, we did, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> I loved those. I have to say, what would what would inspire you to draw as part of the history of the city? What would you be you doing? You know what, for me it would be the ocean, and of course mm -hmm. that lighthouse is so beautiful yes. next to the ocean, but any ocean, even with Catalina in the background, like the views from here are so amazing. So it's beautiful. I think for me it would be that. What about for you? I would have to say possibly I would make an attempt at the Wayfarers Chapel. Oh, that yes. would be great. Um, just oh as a structure gosh, yes. itself, beautiful. you know, right. and um, you know, part of our history and all of that, and just very special. And how about for you? Yeah. Oh Karen. my gosh. How do I choose? Um, the Forest know. Stall Reserve is beautiful. If right. you haven't been there, please go. Mm -hmm. um, red towering cliffs, ocean views, yes. beautiful native plants, animals. I would go at sunset. Um, Avalone Cove, of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. Point Vicente Lighthouse, of course, like you can never go wrong with there, but there's like so many other areas, you know. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, we have the Three Sisters Reserve. Oh, right. I'm sure it's super, a lot of wild grass growing in there, probably mustard, flowers. Yes. This is the best time to do it because yeah. we're, we're entering spring and it's just, we're surrounded by beauty. Baby animals too, we're gonna start seeing baby bunnies and mm -hmm. you know, other animals coming out. So get out there, you know. I'm Whatever inspires you. That's right. I'm surprised yeah. you didn't pick a bunny. I know, I love yes, bunnies. Nobody that hops around and chases bunnies more I than her. Them. You love They're so seeing cute. them. They're um, adorable. So the, you have till the 28th, till the end of the month, to yes. submit that. Okay. And of course, for people watching, they want to know, what are they going to win? Yes. Um, so first prize winners, and this is based on each age category in the contest. Um, the first prize winners, um, you're going to get your art displayed in the seasonal recreation insert. Which is just an insert that goes with the city newsletter. It gets mailed out to all the RPV residents. So your work's going to get out there. Your name's going to get out. You're going to get that exposure, and you will have your name credited on the cover. Um, second and third prize winners, you will um, get your artwork displayed on the 50th anniversary website, and you'll also receive a um, a tote bag with souvenirs inside. How fun! Yes. Well, the Love judges that. are going to have a tough time because we they know are. how much talent it is right here in Rancho Palos Verdes, yes. and so much. Um, yes. So keep them coming in. The submissions coming in, and and then who will be judging the contest? Um, right now, it's probably going to be a collection of committee members and staff. It's going to be a panel, for sure. Okay. But I'm not specifically sure who it's going to be at this time. It's going to be tough, yes. although, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Very exciting. So, yes, mm -hmm. very so, much so. And I think for artists especially, you want to see your work displayed. So the fact that everybody will have a chance to see it is going to be so exciting, too. Very good. Well, Karen, thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate you coming thank in you. studio. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. And when we come back, we're going to have more art for you. You're watching Studio RPV.
back. And Liz, recently you had a chance to visit one of our favorite places, the Palos Verdes Art Center, and I know they have a new exhibit. Tell us about it. They do. The Art Center opened this month, and it's going to last till April. It's called Connective Threads, and it's celebrating fiber artists. Do you know what a fiber that. artist is? I don't. What is that? Fiber artists work with all kinds of materials, from thread, you can think of weaving. Um, you, you can take things like receipts, and cool. there was a kimono on display that's all made out of paper receipts. So, um, it's a fascinating um, way of doing art, and there's about so. 28 artists, all from Southern California, on exhibit. So um, we're going to take you to the show. All right. Welcome, everyone. I am Carrie Burkle, one of the co-curators of the exhibit Connective Threads, Fiber Art from Southern California. And this is an amazing gallery at Palos Verdes Art Center. We have most of the textile arts represented, weaving, tapestry, uh, basketry, twining, um, artists who put fabrics together in really powerful ways, um, artists who collect trash and then manipulate that trash um, using fiber techniques, so the idea of stretching materials um, and not just actually using cloth. The fiber art movement comes out of the 60s and it had its heyday up into the 80s when um, digital design came into, I'll say, schools, and now the pendulum has swung. So now we're seeing a resurgence of people, students in particular, who want to get their hands dirty, work with, work with materials, and not necessarily sit in front of a computer screen. Hello, my name is Gail Fraser, and I am a fiber artist, and this is my piece. It's called Impulse and it is made from wax linen, and it is hand twined, and that is taking all of the work, not on the loom, but on your hands. Hi, and welcome to the Palos Verdes Art Center. This is our 92nd year of being a community art center up on the hill here, and we're very excited. We're today opening our current two-month show, which is called Connective Threads, so please come by and visit us. The show is on through April the 15th, but we have a lot more things to offer at the art center. We are an art school as well. We have a full-service glass studio, ceramic studio, and many other classes for you to offer. This piece behind us is by Chi Jim Bassler, who is one of the most respected and well-known weaving artists in the country. It was a special commission for a uh, orthopedic uh, solutions company. And this is very, very intricate in its work. It's probably the most outstanding piece we have in the whole collection. Every little square you see here, this represents a helix. So it's science-based, and every little square is individually woven. So he goes in and does each individual square, and then comes back and continues to the next one. So this is incredibly elaborate work, and as you can see, it's also really beautiful. If you would like to find out more about this piece and all the other wonderful pieces we have in this collection, we have docent tours twice a week. That is Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 to noon. Of course, coming to the Art Center is free, so please come and take advantage of it and visit our wonderful exhibits. And if you would like to support us, please become a member. There are many benefits to being a member. It gives you discounts in the shop and on uh, the classes that we have to offer. We would really like to have your support and even more so to have us come and visit us up here. You know what, Liz, art is so inspiring and now I want to go to the Art Center and I cannot believe that the Art Center has been there over 90 years. Incredible history in it's our amazing. city. amazing. Yep, more than 90 years and so much going on there. It's really a hub for the community. It is. Um, for creativity and mm -hmm. so you got to check out their website, by the way, um, to make sure, like you can see all the things they've got. So much, so going, much going on. So much going on, yes. And speaking of inspiring, something that inspires a lot of residents and just people in the community here and around the peninsula is hiking. And the city's 50th anniversary will continue next month 
with a hike at Del Cerro Park, and that is going to be so much fun. Yeah, that's Saturday, March 18th. So right. Mark your calendars for the morning. The mayor will be there and VIPs in the community to come on out together. Yep. And uh, Del Cerro Park, breathtaking views. So, what a way to start your day. Yeah, so incredible. Last uh, month, a couple months ago, we did the walk and talks there. Carlos and I were up there with um, our Moranian, our city manager. And really, when you walk through there, it is, we talked about it being so relaxing. It's just the views, all of it, the greenery. It's one of the most beautiful places here, I think. The vistas are amazing mm -hmm. when you get to that fence line and you look oh, out. Incredible. And of course, they're gonna, we're going to have a meeting in the morning with everybody in the community, and yes. then we're partnering with the Land Conservancy mm -hmm. for docent-led hikes to take you right down um, into Del Cerro with the most breathtaking hiking trails. Um, so it's going to be, you know, a day that the community comes together and yes, and if it's has a, a good time, it's a little sunny, you'll see the Catalina, you'll see everything. It's just a beautiful. Amazing. That's a day that we'll be saying, take a hike. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> and it'll be a good thing. It'll be a good thing. I'm looking forward to being there with yeah. RPV TV. That's right. Okay. And remember, once again, that website is rpv50.com. You can get all the information about the anniversary events. Who knew that February was full of so many things, Liz? So many different topics, including Black History Month. And I know recently at the city council meeting, the famous African-American architect Paul Williams was recognized. And I know that he had a lot to do with creating your neighborhood sea view, and he was really an architect to the stars. So tell us more about Paul Williams. Okay, so Paul Revere Williams is a fascinating and incredible story of an African American who was born at the end of the 1800s. He went to USC. His contributions, I think he has over 3,000, 3,600 buildings all homes. over Los Angeles. But the neighborhood I live in, Seaview, um, is his claim to fame right here in Rancho Palos Verdes. That's right. Um, so in the 1960s, he designed mid-century homes, okay. 190 of them in our tract. The house I live in was actually pre Right, Mr. Williams. And, and yours was actually the very first house built yes. in Seaview. It house, was the model home. I was in 1956, our home, and then the infamous Portuguese band Landslide happened. So 60 homes were first built. Um, by Lind Corporation, a construction okay. company that um, did the track our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then because of the landslide, they had to halt construction. And once they got the thumbs up that the geology was okay, they rebranded the community, which was called Portuguese Men Estates, right. and called it Seaview. And then they had this celebrity architect to the stars, Mr. Paul Revere Williams, who designed the 190 remaining homes in the neighborhood. So it's it's pretty amazing. It's amazing, yeah. To see the houses um, is incredible. I brought this book along because yes. very interested in him as an architect, um, Paul Williams. He's fascinating you, to read about him and um, feel grateful that he designed, he's shaped the landscape of our city in my neighborhood for sure and, uh, and fascinating. He, he did and also some very famous celebrities like Lucille Ball, Frank Sinatra. He designed the first AME Church, the Shrine Auditorium. Yeah, he's I mean, had his hands on so many mm -hmm. great uh, masterpieces of homes and this all kinds of architecture that yes. he's done, from Tudor style to, mm -hmm. um, he did Williamsburg Lane in Rolling Hills. He is finally being, you know, during Black History Month, we are recognizing the work of um, yeah. incredible African Americans and uh, there's great documentaries on him. In fact, right here on RPV TV, um, Larry Paul, who's a resident in Seaview, in my, he's one of my neighbors, Yes. last year did in lectures with Leanne, mm -hmm. a fantastic presentation about uh, Mr. Williams, and it's going to be running this entire month in honor of Black History Month. We're re-showing that. Yeah. 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock at night. 10 and RPV 10. RPV TV, 10 and right. 10, mm -hmm. to learn more about this um, unbelievable genius of an architect yeah. that has shaped our landscape. and. Um, I really recommend le learning more about him. And the list goes on, like celebrity to the yeah, stars, it, you know, Desi Arnaz, Lucy, I, exactly. Lucille Ball's house. Yeah. And, um, it's yeah. amazing. I mean, you really don't know who your neighbors are or, or who they, where they came from. And then you start digging and learning more and more about everyone in the community. And look, yeah. what a great story. And his story is inspiring for so many reasons. Yeah. He was, um, during the times that he was born in, he was an orphan as well and um, just just did not let race get in the way. No. Um, he just pushed and uh, he was, you know, at USC. He's being honored like he should be for just the work he has done. And, um, and what an amazing talent. All of his blueprints of are at the Getty Museum. Um, so we're gonna see a lot more about him, I think. Um, it's exciting. It's, it's, it's like, you know, 
I, I find his work incredibly exciting. And just drive around Seaview and check out yeah. all those mid-century homes that he designed because they're they're fabulous homes. It's incredible. And get the book, too. Yeah. The pictures in the book are they're fantastic. Yes. Very good. All right. All right. Well, we will be right back. You're watching Studio RPV. All right, now it's time for the sweetest part of our Studio RPV show today. Sweet and healthy. Sweet treats, healthy treats, because February is also National Heart Month, and we have heart healthy treats. Heart healthy treats. It's Valentine's Day. That's why we're wearing red in honor of Valentine's Day and heart healthy. Mm -hmm. And Liz, you actually made one of these yummy desserts right here. Tell us about that. I did, of course. Mm. I wanted to pick the treat that had the dark chocolate because we know dark chocolate is actually good so for your good heart. So good for you. Yep. And so I had my sister-in-law who grew up in the peninsula. She's visiting. And you put her to work. Put her to work because she's the berries. Watch her go to work making some delicious dipped strawberries. Hey, Liz and Maria. Thanks for joining me to make these heart-healthy strawberries, chocolate dip, dark chocolate, for a heart-healthy snack for... Uh, a sweet treat. We have just four ingredients. We've got strawberries, dark chocolate, one teaspoon of avocado oil, and nuts, which are optional. So I'm looking forward to making these with you. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to wash the strawberries and dry them really well. They need to be really dry. Then we're going to take the chocolate chips, a half cup of chocolate chips, and we're going to microwave them in 30 second increments. We're going to add this teaspoon of avocado oil to the top of the chips so that they're more smooth when they come out and they dip easier. After two minutes in the microwave, after stirring it, it looks smooth and ready for dipping. All right, let the dipping begin. I'm gonna do the first half nut-free, and then the second half I'll do with the chopped almonds. Now we're gonna dip it and have a little dipping party, pick it up by the stem, Flop it in the chocolate, get it a little bit on both sides, and then set it on your wax paper. Now it's time to go a little nutty. This is such an easy treat to make. Not just because it's February and Valentine's Day, but any time of year, you've got the antioxidants in dark chocolate, a good for you version of chocolate, nuts which are healthy, and it's a delicious treat for any time of year. Okay, I just finished about a dozen strawberries in 15 minutes. If when you're finished, you can pop them in the refrigerator, let them firm up a bit, you can leave them on the parchment paper, I think I'm just going to pop this one in my mouth now. Delicious. You know, Liz, it's really so important to be heart healthy and really something as simple and easy as these beautiful dipped strawberries are so delicious, but really good for you as well. It's a good choice. Yes, it is. And, you know, we've bought a bunch of heart healthy snacks because, you know, we love to snack. We've yes. got some wonderful uh, Greek yogurt dip. Mm -hmm. It's a, a zero fat yogurt dip that Great. I just added a lot of bunch of herbs and I actually caramelized some onions, a little bit of onions, Great. added those in. And of course you never, you can never have enough nuts. Well, we say Especially that, almonds. but actually when you get your nuts, you're supposed to just have like a, a handful. handful. Yes, At yes, a time. Yes, 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 yes. I guess I'll be eating these after. Yeah, I guess you'll be eating and those And fresh now. vegetables. Yep, can't um, go wrong. For your dips, and yep. I know how much we like our potato chips, but we try to avoid that now, yes. right? So and go for the fresh vegetables cut up. Right, and then raisins are a great heart-healthy snack, as well as oatmeal, a great starter for the morning. So that's also a great choice. And Liz, for you, you have lost 16 pounds, really sticking to basically a heart healthy diet. I did. How I, difficult has that been? Or what kind of a challenge was that for you? Well, it was a shift for me. And I've decided it started about three months ago, realizing that it seemed like every 10 years I was putting on another 10 pounds. Right. And as though I consider myself a healthy eater, I was eating too much and too much of the wrong things. Yes. Like I mentioned, potato chips. Well, your so body changes. I started the put the chips down theory and pick up the vegetables. So I'm eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. I'm getting my sugars in sweets because I do have a sweet tooth yep. through like dried fruit, fresh fruit like raisins, mm -hmm. and also um, lean meats, proteins, 
all the vegetables. So what I'm really saying no to is a lot of extra fat, yeah. sweets. And over three months, I've, I've dropped the 16 pounds. And I am full all the time. That's I great. love how I feel. And so all these foods here would be something that I would have, especially every few days. I love to have a start off my day with a bowl oh, of oatmeal. I love oatmeal. It's filling. It's so heart healthy. Mm -hmm. and um, It even has the heart healthy uh, logo yes, right there. That's... So heart healthy. Look for that when you're looking for <clears throat> food. The American awesome. Heart Association, they yeah. have their stamp on foods that are good choices. Mm -hmm. um, and it's such a great, I have, you know, the website. Yeah, you can get so, so much awesome. interesting information from them, mm -hmm. including, you know, right now they're really pushing for people um, during the month of February to learn CPR. Right. And actually, in a couple of months, we are going to do that right here in studio. We're going to teach you how to do CPR. Uh, there's new ways of doing it now. And it's really important. Uh, my cousin, a few years back, had he was a healthy 48-year-old, and he had a what it was called a widowmaker heart attack. He was playing basketball with his friends, and he survived. But the doctor said it was because he was so healthy. Mm -hmm. And so thank God that he got through it, and now he is really, really super conscious. He was always a good eater, but really eating heart healthy, and he's in great shape. So I, I think he so sent important. you a challenge even, right, he for did. you to learn CPR. Because That's right. the new way of doing CPR, which they show you if you go onto the site, that literally, yep. um, you know, there's courses that, you know, that are in depth for people that are, you know, obviously in emergency um, preparedness right. that need, to, like, they go through hours of training. But within, like, a very short time, you can right. learn just the basic, mm -hmm. um, how you do the compressions with hands only. You know, the days that I remember taking first aid and, and CPR, you know, you had... You have to learn the breathing, the breathing. and now yeah. it's just hands only. And also, I think um, not to have you start talking about football again, but but with what happened with, with Demar, Demar Hamlin, Hamlin right? Mm -hmm. It really right. drew attention to how much, as a community, um, we need to take care of our own hearts, but we may have to help take care of someone else's heart. That's the thing, and really, it was the doctors and the trainers that saved his life, right? on the spot on the football field when he went down and you know thank god he is also walking around and healthy now so start right here eat heart healthy and it, it just it's so good for your body to do things like this oh so is it time for us to eat a little it's, heart well, I was say, it's good for your body and it's good for my body to eat a chocolate covered strawberry with nuts because I love nuts. And so she's a little nutty and fun. I'm a little nutty, and you know what? I love these. Yeah. Which the heart healthy snacks. I've got a strawberry right here, Liz. What are you going to go for? I'm going to go for my heart healthy, non fat Greek homemade yogurt dip. All right. So easy. Just add any spices, fresh herbs, and. It smells good. By the way, if you're wondering, Greek yogurt is supposedly healthier. A little healthier. Because of it has more protein and less sugar. So. So enjoy. Cheers to being healthy in 2023. That's so right. much fun. Yeah. And, um, Always. Thank sweet you. way to end the show. A sweet way, and Carlos is going to come on in here mm. and, and eat with us. But thank you all so much for watching. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. See you next we'll time. We'll see you next month. Come Enjoy. On, Carlos. We Enjoy. share. Yeah. Enjoy. Mm. I'll try this. Mm. this dip is really yeah. good. I'm Maria Soraya. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Liz, are you looking to have some fun in Rancho Palos Verdes? I'm always looking for some fun. And are you looking to find out about all the great things happening in our city? Including the city's big 50th anniversary. And you can find out every month what's going on. You can find out right here on Studio RPV. On RPV TV.